The thought of taking the PE exam is enough to make anyone nervous or stressed out. However, you can breathe a little easier knowing that it's multiple choice and it's an open book exam. But before you rent a pickup truck and load up all the engineering notes and books that you can get your hands on, there are some guidelines that you should adhere to when choosing what reference materials and other items to bring into the PE exam, which is what I'd like to share with you in this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam. But before I do that, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, a salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge, but through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything that you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments, I will answer them on future videos. In fact, this video was created in response to a comment on a previous video. As I mentioned earlier, the PE exam is an open book exam. And when I took it, I remember people wielding wagons filled with books. Yes, that's wagons, plural. So let me give you some advice on study materials based on my own experience, as well as conversations that I've had with others who have passed the PE exam. Think of your reference materials in two levels, primary and secondary. I'm a huge believer in the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, which tells us that 80% of our success in our careers and lives comes from 20% of our efforts. Let me say that again. 80% of our success in our careers and lives come from 20% of our efforts. Now this theory translates to studying and taking the PE exam as well. You will utilize 20% of the reference materials that you bring to the exam 80% of the time. Those are your primary reference materials. The rest of what you bring are your secondary reference materials, which you may use to answer a problem here or there. You should always remember that your biggest opponent or barrier to passing the PE exam is not your knowledge, it's most likely time. So you need to answer the questions on the exam as quickly and efficiently as possible. And the more materials that you're paging through during the exam, the harder it will be to finish problems quickly. Therefore, I highly recommend that you utilize one or maximum two books as your primary reference materials. And these two books are the books that you should study with 90% of the time. You should tab them up in accordance with the guidelines and you should study with them every single day. You should eat with them, you should sleep with them. You get the picture. For me, I chose the Civil Engineering Reference Manual, also known as CIRM, by Michael Lindeberg as my primary reference book and used it for everything. I also had a binder with reference tables and equations that I put together based on working through many practice problems. Those were my two primary reference books. You can find the link to some helpful books for different disciplines in the description of this video. Now, once you're set on your primary reference materials, I do recommend bringing more or less all of your other engineering books with you in a crate or a wagon where you can easily see them all. These books should only be used when you're faced with a problem that you cannot answer using your primary reference materials. Let me give you an example from my own experience. When I sat for the PE exam, there was a qualitative question around the strength of concrete, something related to how quickly the concrete cures. I attempted to answer the question using my primary reference materials, and I couldn't. So I skipped the question, and I came back to it at the end of the exam. I took a look at my secondary reference materials, and I saw an old workbook that I had picked up along my career journey entitled Building Construction for Engineers. I flipped through the index of that workbook, and I looked up concrete. And sure enough, the book contained the exact information that I needed to answer that qualitative question correctly. Now, why is this story so important to me? Because I just barely passed the PE exam by one or two questions. 
So while it is important to have great primary reference materials that you'll utilize for most of your studying and for most of the questions on the exam, secondary reference materials are also important and can be useful. And in fact, they may help you to answer that one or two questions that actually puts you over the hump to pass the exam. Now, one last thing I wanna note here. There are some guidelines provided by NCWS in regard to what you can and can't bring to the exam. And a test administrator does have the right to review your materials against these guidelines on the day of the exam. You should review the guidelines at the start of your study process. But let me go through a few of them for you right now. No loose papers or pages. Any notes taken on loose leaf paper must be bound in a three ring binder, a plastic snap binder, or with screw posts. Notes in a composition notebook or spiral notebook are permitted. Pages must not be stapled together. Sticky notes or flags are accepted only if attached to bound materials. Any reference materials glued or stitched together such as books are permitted. Basically, as long as you don't have any loose papers floating around, you should be okay. Keep in mind that during the exam, you may not rip out any pages or remove any sticky notes and doing so may result in immediate dismissal from the exam. I hope you found this week's video helpful. Remember the 80-20 rule in all of your studying efforts and your reference material selection. In upcoming videos, I will walk through some more practice problems, but I'll also talk about tackling qualitative or conceptual problems. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to them. Let me know if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you'd like answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. In fact, this video was created in response to a comment on a previous video. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.